Friends, a cold, hard fact of life is that the vast majority of humanity has died without believing in any way the message of Jesus Christ. Indeed, countless numbers have lived and died without hearing even a single mention of His name. Perhaps this enormous number of non-Christians includes some of your dead ancestors or relatives, perhaps a parent or grandparent, or even a child. Are all of these people lost forever? What does your Bible really say? If you want to know the incredible answer, then stay tuned. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tomorrow's World. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the planet Earth is currently home to about six and one-half billion people. It's a planet awash in a variety of religious beliefs, cultural practices, and traditions of every kind. Out of these religions, three currently dominate the globe. The most recent estimates tell us there are approximately 2.1 billion Christians, 1.3 billion Muslims, and 0.9 billion Hindus. Only about one-third of the current population of the earth claims in any way at all to be Christian. One-third. And that's just the current population. In the thousands of years of mankind's history leading up to this point in time, how many people have walked the earth? One population scientist, Carl Hobb of the Population Research Bureau, has estimated that in the last 2,000 years, 60 billion people have been born. 60 billion. Such numbers are almost unimaginable. If we had a penny for each of these people and began stacking them one flat penny on another, then a stack of 60 billion pennies would reach more than 59,000 miles high and would take us about one-fourth of the way to the moon. Regardless of how you look at it, many billions of human souls have been born, lived their lives, and died here on planet Earth since Adam and Eve. Yet Christianity has only been around for the last 2,000 years. And in that time, we are only now at the point where one-third of humanity considers itself Christian. How many have lived their lives as faithful Muslims or good Hindus, or perhaps as adherents to any one of the confusing and bewildering mass of religions that cover our planet, never believing the message of Jesus Christ? For that matter, how many who call themselves Christian actually do not believe in the true Jesus Christ of the Bible, believing instead in what the Apostle Paul called another Jesus? and a different gospel. Now we can go one step further. If you're willing to, are you willing to honestly face the facts? Are you willing to ask the hard questions in search of the truth? The fact is that tens of billions of human beings have lived and died never even hearing the name of Jesus Christ with their own ears. In the countless wars and armed conflicts that have raged throughout mankind's history and in the innumerable disease epidemics and famines that have ravaged huge populations in various nations over the centuries, how many of the dead met their end never even having a chance to hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ? Not once having even an opportunity to believe in the gospel of the kingdom of God. Are all these lives lost forever? Has God allowed the vast majority of the human beings that he created in his own image to become unrecoverable? and unsavable. Now some who believe themselves to be Bible scholars simply say, yes, that's just the way things are. 
But is that the kind of capricious and uncaring God that the Bible requires us to believe in? On the other side of the spectrum, some liberal theologians would look at these undeniable facts of history and they would say, no, there are many paths to God and surely God will save the good people anyway, even if they didn't believe in Jesus. But friends, can we allow ourselves to indulge in such a fantasy just to make ourselves feel better? Can we just imagine this problem away? Not if we claim to be Christians and not if we claim God's word as the only authority for our belief and practice. Let's not build our belief on wispy fantasy and wishful thinking, but on the solid rock of God's inspired word. If you have your Bible with you, turn to the book of Acts. And I urge you, during this program, don't believe me. Get your own Bible. Check up on me. Don't take my word for it. Prove to yourself that these are the words of God out of your own Bible. In Acts chapter 4, we read, beginning in verse 10, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved. Concerning unbelievers, those who do not have an understanding of the truth and who do not know the true God of the Bible, God's word is clear. We see their status described by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Having no hope and without God in the world the Bible resoundingly condemns the idea that there are multiple paths to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God's word is clear and unyielding in this regard. And yet scripture also tells us that God's desire is for all to be saved. Look at what he says to the prophet Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 11. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. The apostle Peter teaches us as well that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Is the God of the Bible so powerless that he's only able to save a small portion, maybe a handful of the human beings that he claims he wants to save? Is God so short-sighted that he has doomed the majority of the human beings he created in his own image to die without even a chance to know him? What is the fate of those who have died without Christ? including perhaps people that you have personally known and loved. We'll address the Bible's inspiring answer to these questions in the next part of our program. But first, let me encourage you to write or call and request this free booklet that we're offering today, entitled, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? You need the incredible hope of the true teaching of your Bible, which this booklet will powerfully and clearly lay out for you. As always, all of our literature is completely free with no cost and no obligation. So please call us at the number shown on your screen or write us today to request your free copy of this booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? 
Just ask for the booklet on salvation. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number once again is 1-800-718-4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insight on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Welcome back. Earlier in our program, we demonstrated from the scriptures that one must really know Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ of the Bible, in order to have access to salvation and be in the coming kingdom of God. Yet we also recognized that the vast majority of mankind has never known Jesus Christ. Is God careless or powerless? Is he haphazard and random? Is it mostly a matter of chance as to who will have an opportunity to be saved and who is lost forever? We can thank God that he is none of these things. The beautiful truth is that God has a plan and it is a plan for all of mankind. It may shock you to learn that God is not trying to save the entire world at this time. Are you surprised? Let's look at the testimony of Scripture on this issue. Turn to John chapter 6 and verse 44. In this passage, Jesus Christ says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, we read, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. The apostles recognized that God must actively open the mind of an individual before he or she can see and understand the truth of Scripture. We see examples of such openings of understanding after Christ's resurrection in Luke chapter 24 and verse 32, as well as verse 45. We read in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 that Satan the devil has deceived the whole world. Friends, the deceived do not know that they are deceived. When God calls, he begins to open the mind and to lift the veil so that one can begin to understand the truth for the very first time. Why are so many in this world, dead or alive, so deceived? God is simply not calling the entire world at this time. As another example, consider the words of the Apostle Paul concerning his kinsmen according to the flesh. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it is written, God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear to this very day. Paul recognized that in God's plan, the major part of the Jews were not to be called in this age. Yet are they lost? No. As Paul says just a few verses later in Romans chapter 11 and verse 26, And so all Israel will be saved. Well, let's look at another example in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul explains a crucial aspect of God's plan beginning in verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. 
and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. It may be a bit humbling for Christians to know that they are among the foolish and base things of the world, but we must recognize here that Paul states explicitly that God is generally not calling the wise of the world at this time. He is not now calling the strong and the mighty. But does this mean that the strong and the mighty of this world are to be arbitrarily excluded from the kingdom of God. Since scripture says that they are not generally called in this age, does God hate the rich and the powerful in favor of the poor and weak so that he will not give them a chance? No. Turn to Romans chapter 2 and verse 11. For there is no partiality with God. Do you believe what the Bible says? God is no respecter of persons, and he will give all the same chance, regardless of their status in life, low or high, weak or mighty. So God's plan must include an opportunity for the mighty of this world as well. Though Paul clearly states that it's not at this time, not in this age. So if not now, when? Let's consider what we've seen so far. God wishes to offer repentance and the knowledge of the truth to all mankind, yet vast portions of humanity have died without even having an opportunity. God wishes to offer salvation to all men, and yet he requires that salvation be offered only through the name of Jesus Christ. And few on this earth have believed in the teachings and message of Christ. Most have not. In the fact, the graves are full of men, women, and children who have never even heard of Jesus Christ. In this age, God has allowed the minds of the Jews, his chosen people, Paul's kinsmen in the flesh, to be generally blinded to the truth. And the vast majority of them have died throughout the centuries not believing in the Messiah that was born from their very own tribe. Yet God also says that somehow... All Israel shall be saved. God is impartial and fair to all men. And yet he is only calling a few in this age. The rest have lived and died as if in a spiritual stupor, deceived by Satan the devil who deceives the whole world. If this is the state of things in this age, and it is by the authority of God's word, then there must be an age to come in which the greater part of humanity is called to salvation. Does this idea shock you? It is the only idea that fits the Bible facts. But does the Bible describe such a time? Does the Bible bear witness of a future age when those who died without knowing the true Jesus Christ, perhaps some that you've known and loved who were not called by God in this age, would have their opportunity. Not a second chance, but a first real chance. As I stand here today in the presence of God, I say to you that yes, it does. And it is one of the most encouraging, hopeful, and beautiful truths of the Bible. Yet you have probably never heard it before, never heard it from the pulpits of your church or read about it in the works of your favorite scholars. Do you want to see the amazing truth out of your own Bible? We'll look at God's word on this matter in our last segment today. But first, I cannot urge you strongly enough to take advantage of our offer today and order our absolutely free booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? There is so much information on this topic, which we simply cannot cover within the small amount of time we have here today on our broadcast. This booklet will lay out for you the clear Bible teaching on this subject. You need the encouragement and peace of mind that comes from knowing the truth. We want to send you this booklet absolutely free of charge without any obligation or strings attached. Simply call the number on your screen or write to the address we'll show you in a moment and ask for the booklet on salvation. 
This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number once again is 1-800-718-4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insight on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. We ended the last segment with a question. Does the Bible tell us of a future age when the exceedingly great number of those who were not called in this age will have an opportunity? When those vast multitudes who did not have a chance to truly know the Jesus Christ of the Bible, the real Jesus Christ, and not the other Jesus that Paul warns us of, when those two will have the veil of confusion and deception removed and their minds open to the truth of the scriptures? The answer is an astounding and wonderful yes. The Bible does indeed describe such a time. Turn to Revelation chapter 20. Ask God to help you understand, to work with you, to open your mind to his amazing truth. In Revelation chapter 20, and verse 4, we read, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their forehead or their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Notice carefully what is said in verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, there are a number of things you might notice in this verse. One is that the reward of the saints is a resurrection from the dead, just as Jesus Christ experienced. But notice, too, this is the first resurrection. At the very least, a first implies a second. Look again. We are told the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. The rest of the dead, those who were not called in this age, do live again. And when does this resurrection take place? Verse 5 tells us, after the thousand years were finished. At the end of the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ and his glorified saints, yet the later resurrection of the rest of the dead is not a resurrection like that of the saints in the first resurrection. As verse 6 makes clear, God's faithful called in this age are resurrected to eternal life, over which the second death, permanent death in the lake of fire, has no power. If death still has power over those in the second resurrection, then it must be a resurrection to physical life. Yet what is the purpose of the second resurrection? Let's read more details about this second resurrection in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books or the Bible. We see the book of life opened so that those who did not previously have a chance can now have their names entered, that they too might have access to the mercy and forgiveness of God and to eternal life in God's kingdom. In fact, we're given a very graphic description of this time in the Old Testament. Do you recall that Paul had said, all of Israel shall be saved? Turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. 
Let's begin reading in verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Verse 11 identifies this vast host as the whole house of Israel. Or as Paul said in Romans chapter 11 and verse 26, all of Israel. However, it will not only be Israel. Other verses, such as Matthew chapter 12, verses 41 and 42, make it clear that Gentiles too will stand with Israel in that day. And for what purpose are they resurrected? Look at Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 14. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. They are resurrected to receive salvation, to have their names finally written in the book of life. What a glorious plan and what a glorious God. How joyously we can say with the apostle Paul, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Again, I urge you to call and write for our free booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? Which will lay out for you what God's word teaches on this vital subject and other related questions. Don't let another day of your life go by without knowing the truth. And tune in again next week to Tomorrow's World, where Roderick Meredith and Richard Ames will share with you more incredible truth using the pages of your own Bible, powerful truth that you will not hear anywhere else. See you right here next week. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-718. 4800. That number once again is 1 800 718 4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina 28227. To view today's program, order the free literature offered, or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God. 